Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven. This video is going to be a little different and unfortunately not clickbait. This pick and place project has evolved past just an open source design and into an entire company. And with a company comes company level problems. <laughs> I've really enjoyed getting into some of this in recent videos, especially about sourcing, but this one is a doozy. A few months ago, Lucian opened his email to find a cease and desist. For those of you who don't know, a cease and desist is basically a letter saying, if you don't stop doing X, we're going to pursue legal action. I think of it as a polite formal request to resolve an issue without getting a court involved. So why the heck did we get one and who sent it? I'm not gonna get specific about what company sent it because ultimately it doesn't matter. And please, no conjecture in the comments about who it is. I'll delete any comments that have any guesses in them. It's just not important and they're doing what makes sense for them, but it was sent because of our company's name, Index Machines. Their letter claims that because of some trademarks that they own, we can't use that name. They asked us to stop using the word index altogether, company name and project name. So naturally it sucks to get this letter. <laughs> It's never fun finding out someone's jonesing to sue you. As soon as we read through this, we immediately got a trademark lawyer and hopped on a call. Long story short, while we could fight it, we've decided to avoid a long battle and just call ourselves something else. Turns out, if you have a trademark, you have an obligation to defend it. What we've learned is that if you want to retain your name and make sure that you don't get sued over it, you kind of have to get a trademark and you have to defend it. We think that's what this company is doing and we would much rather work on the pick and place than fight with them. So we will be adopting a new company name and a new project name. Part of the reason why I'm making this video is because I wanna share this with all of you because this has been going on for months now and it's kind of been killing me not being able to talk about it. <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> and the second reason is I want your ideas. I've been working on this project for about two years now and over that time and all the videos I've made, you all have given me so many good ideas for so many different kinds of things that I could do to make the project better, to organize things better, all kinds of stuff. I'm sure you all have a bunch of super good ideas for names out there and I wanna hear them. Naturally, Lucian and I have been thinking about names also for months and months and months and trying to pick something that would be good. Not only a company name, but also a name for the project. Maybe they're one and the same like they kind of were up until this point or maybe they're two separate things. We're still trying to figure it out. We've been kind of thinking as like the whole naming dichotomy falling into three broad categories. The first one is where the company name and the product name are kind of the same thing, like Bantam Tools. They sell the Bantam Tools Mill. It's like the noun at the end of the company name. And that's something we could do, but it wouldn't give the project its own good name separate from us as the entity that actually makes the thing. And I think that's something that's pretty important. The second category is where they kind of smush together, like Adafruit. Adafruit makes the feather line. It's the Adafruit feather. If you Google feather, it's not gonna come up with their product, but if you Google Adafruit feather, that's their thing. Form Labs falls into this category too. The Form Labs Fuse 1, Form 1, Form 2, Form 3. And then there's the third option where they're completely separate, where the name of the company is completely separate from the product that they produce. Examples of these are like Shapeoko. Carbide 3D is the name of the company, but they make Shapeoko as a product. The Nomad, that's a line that they make. That's the name of the product. I think we're thinking about picking one in the second or third tier because having the project have its own name is pretty important to have it be its own entity. And we're the entity that makes it, but the project is its own living, breathing thing. And I think giving it a separate name from the name of the company is, is a good thing to do. So when picking a new name, what are things to think about? The first and obviously the most important is this whole cease and desist thing doesn't happen again. <laughs> what we're going to do is take a list of names that we think are good and we're gonna send them through a trademark search. This is effectively going through and checking to see if any of those names might collide with existing trademarks, if anyone might have a reason to send us one of those letters. Then it's the process of going through and looking at available domain names and social media handles on all the different websites and seeing if they're available. And are we okay if they're not available? Can we add a dash? Are we okay with that? That whole thing. Ugh. <laughs> oh man. And then at the end of all that, we'll probably have a list of a few names and then we pick the one we like the best. Now, as for what the name actually is, making up words is something that we've been thinking about. It's very hard to do this without it sounding silly for a very long time, but ultimately it does mean that you reserve that name. You've got that name and you're not gonna infringe on anyone else. You're not gonna ruffle any feathers and you also show up and search really well. We've had ideas all the way from mid-scale tools, which is really straightforward and says exactly what we do, all the way up to me literally taking every letter in the word goblin and rearranging it into different anagrams. How does globny sound? <laughs> That's literally written down on my list. <laughs> globny. <laughs> no. Picking a good name is hard. It's a really weird process. It's something that people will literally actually pay a firm to do for them. If y'all are not familiar, there's a great podcast called Startup, 
which is made by Alex Bloomberg, who used to work for Planet Money, and he went off and made his own company, making his own podcast uh, at a company called Gimlet Media. In one of their early episodes, I'll link it in the description because it is fascinating listening to this. They literally hire a company to pick names for them, and that's how they got Gimlet Media. They went through and they, they paid them a ton of money to come up with all these different names, reasonings why it would work, they're pre-trademark vetted, the whole nine, and they sit down in an office and they just were told like 15 names, and then they just picked one they liked. Picking a name is hard. It's really tricky. Probably close to six months now? We don't have one. <laughs> we don't know. We have a lot of options, but none we're super stoked about. If, as I'm saying all this, you're like, oh man, I got such a good name, please leave it in the comments. We would love to hear your thoughts on this. This is definitely one of those things where the more voices, the better, the more weird, funky, interesting ideas, the more knobs it starts to turn, the more juices are flowing, the better ideas come out of it. So if you have even an inkling of a thing you might think it would be cool, I read all the comments. I will see it. I will look at it and it will go into a document that we consider. I am technically talking about both company name and the project of the pick and place, but I really mean the project. What we are putting out there into the world is the project, is the pick and place. And that's what all of you have contributed to. So that's really where I would love to hear your thoughts. What do you think? What would be a good thing to call this? <sighs> this has been such an unbelievable amount of stress <laughs> dealing with this. <laughs> figuring out hiring lawyers and figuring out what to do about this. Naturally, I'm really bummed about this. It breaks my heart. I always liked the name. I thought of the name Index as a company or a product name when I was in the shower at Supercon. It was before the first day of Supercon in like 2019 or something. And I was like, that'd be a good name for something. And it sucks to not use it anymore. <laughs> Everyone refers to it by that. The community is built off of that word. And that's, that sucks. But this is the path forward and I'm really looking forward to seeing what funky ideas you guys have. This project is very much a community driven thing. I did the meat of the work to begin with, but so many contributors have contributed work and effort and thought and advice into making it what it is. It only makes sense to have y'all weigh in on the name too. <sighs> you guys. <laughs> Anyway, that's it for this one. I'm sorry this one's a short one. This is not the only thing we're dealing with behind the scenes right now. <laughs> a lot of other weird stuff is happening that I can't quite talk about yet, but I hopefully will be able to very soon. I'm just so relieved that I can tell y'all about this now. All right, that's it for this one. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> it's a good thing we know what we're doing. <laughs>